Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've got my mate Steve Jankowski here. He's the master Mulloway hunter. He's, he's a classic beachworm catcher. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. But before we go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell to keep following the channel. Now, Steve, give us yes. a little bit of a background uh, about yourself. You're a sponsored angler by EJ Todd? Yes. Yes. And what's the plan tonight? I can see you holding that lovely rod there that I bought off. Uh, I bought the other week. What's the, what's that rod? The NS Black Hole. NS Black Hole Surf. Uh, it's only a new addition to the NS range, so it's a 1202, 10 to 20 kilo surf rod. Um, very good casting. Uh, very light. Very durable for uh, for drift fishing. Nice yeah. line on it. I mean, I use uh, what line you using? You're a mono sunline, guy. Sunline, yeah, Sunline. Sunline, really. It's it's uh, the Sunline tournament. It's called with obviously the shock leaders the um the sunline shock I think it's called yep so it's pretty much yeah all sunline I love the patterns in this I actually I actually got myself one of these rods and um, I'm still yet to catch a mulloway on it I've tried about two times yep. um but hopefully um that's the plan so what are we doing today at the moment we're not going to be chasing mulloway here we're going to be going up the coast that's right correct okay so this video is basically on catching some bait that a lot of people won't really use um, that, or they're not familiar with using it so we're going to actually be targeting beach worms today um, and from what I hear you're a bit of a master <laughs> <laughs> I'm alright we'll, yep. we'll get the we'll get the beach worms up and um, show everyone how it's done okay so what we'll do is uh, we'll get this rod back in the car we just yep. wanted to sort of show them what sort of setup you're using um, and mate and uh, yeah let's go get our hands on these beach worms and get our feet wet uh, just another interesting question. Um, do you think that night time's a better time to chase these um, these beach worms? Look, night time less crowd. I mean, depending on the tide, the tides could be a bit small in the night. So, you know, worms tend to pop up more in the night. So, okay. Yeah. And what what particular tide? Are you looking at the lower tides? Lower tides, yeah. Like the zero point fours or zero point fives, anything lower than that. And what about the time? Um, what about the time? Two hours before the low tide and two hours after, or? Uh, two hours going down to the low tide and two hours coming up from the high, uh, to the high tide. That's it. Okay. No worries. Yeah. All right. All right, Steve, mate. Uh, giving you a bit of an intro. Let's uh, let's get down there to the beach and uh, let's get our hands on um. Let's go. Door. Let's get these worms. <laughs> Sweet. So what we've what we've basically got here, I mean, Steve's just getting ready. He's going to fill up the bucket with water. Pay close attention to this because I saw a mulloway caught up, you know, on another beach um, a while ago, and it was caught on beach worms, and it was caught in the shallows, and I was quite surprised because, and that's the one thing I've been chasing mulloway for about 20 years. To see someone pull in a 105 centimeter mulloway out of you know basically knee deep water was a surprise to me and it kind of <laughs> it tends to raise a lot of question marks in what i've been taught and um so the idea here is with steve and steve's kind enough to show us his tricks uh is to get onto these beach worms and um and like i said we're not gonna i'm not gonna be able to go up with him up the coast to chase these mull away but um you know it's basically another alternative for bait and this might come in handy for a lot of guys that are chasing um, that are chasing jewies that can't get their hands on squid or can't get their hands on yellowtail. And you can obviously, you know, if you're cashed up, you can always buy them as well. So anyway, we'll keep going. Okay, Steve, so let's let's see what gear you're using here. Right. What the hell is that? So the pick of the fish is um speak louder because of these waves. It's called a smoke kipper, so it's similar to like a smoke herring. Um, you can buy them in two packs, two, two, two fish like this you can buy in Woolies, yep. um, not expensive, probably looking at about the $6 mark, that's our bait tonight for the beach worms, so how this is going to work is cut the head off, head goes off, tail goes off, don't need that, now there's a split in half, so take that off, what you're going to do, so you buy these from Coles? From Woolies, Woolies. From Woolies, yeah. okay. And what are they called? They're called smoked kippers. So smoked they're, kippers. They're like a smoked herring. Any fish that's smoked, like a smoked cod or smoked herring, or whatever it is, an oily fish is, is good for the beach worms. Okay. So um, that's what you've got to use if you want to get the beach worms up. So next step is you've got to take the bone off so it doesn't rip the stocking. It's still frozen. 
dip it in a little bit of water. Just going to thaw it out. Thaw it out a little bit, yeah. So, got to speak up too. Yeah. Let it thaw out a little bit. I'm going to take the bones out. That one's fine. Okay, just plonk that one. Just plonk that one. So, for now. what you've got to do is you cut it up in pieces. Louder. So, cut it up in pieces, not in big pieces, in smaller pieces. Usually, one fish is enough for the whole night. So one fish enough for the whole night, yeah? Yep. Whole night. Take the bones off like that. You usually do this guy when guys when the fish is uh, defrosted. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all. Well I called you last minute so they haven't had a chance to get out of the freezer, that's right. eh? That's it. <laughs> Make sure you always have the bait beforehand um, ready, otherwise you could go to the shops and they might not have it. So, preparation's the best. All right. Okay. Now, where do they go? Now, the stockings. Best bet is, guys, I know you're not going to like to buy these in the shops, because whatever reasons. Because um, you got some kind of a sick fetish, have you? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> so, what you're going to do is you're going to buy two different ones. You're going to buy one that's more thin, just in case the beach worms, um, beach worms, you know, they might want something that's more finesse. Yep. For the smaller ones now for the bigger size ones that are the dewy baits you gotta go so, you gotta so go I think, thicker are they called king worms i think they're called king worms these bigger ones that you've uh, been getting just bigger size beach worms i mean if you want to call them a king worm you can they're very big so go for a bigger thicker stocking only because they will rip the stocking they will because they got pretty sharp yes biters. yes so i mean one stocking i mean you can get you can get a couple of uses out of it usually you get the knife Cut it about here, so you get one use. You get about two to three uses out of it, maybe even four, just depending how long the stocking is. I mean, you tend to find the bottom part of it's the best part. So you know, let's go. As I'll show you now, put in the stocking. So this is Steve Jankowski's method. Chasing beach worms. Yep. He uses a smoked kipper that he buys from Woolies. That's right, correct. He's tying it up there, and now you're going to put it on a string, aren't you? String, no, no, no string. No string. No okay, string. interesting. And this is what I like about videos that I do. I like to do things that's sort of away from away from normal, um, a little bit different approach to. As you can see, the juice is coming out of it. That's the oily part of it. So, so that's what you want. You want that juice to go through the sand, that's and right. it, and that's kind of going to act like a burly, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right. All right. Let's get down to the let's sand and go from there. That's it. Okay. So what Steve's doing now, he's trying to find a suitable location. He's saying it's going to pop up. So, what are you flicking there? You're flicking the juices. Juices, that's right. That's great. So he's flicking the juices now. We're just trying to work here because we don't want to drop the camera in the water. He's flicking the juices around, and we're looking for we're looking for that little V in the sand to come up. Is there one there? So he's flicking those juices. I think I saw one just here. I saw one just here, buddy, just here. There's one just there. One of the tricks here is working in with the waves. So the idea here is instead of working, basically instead of working your stocking left to right on a rope is to squeeze that to squeeze that little um, stocking bag and flip the juice everywhere. And doing this at night is obviously a little bit harder. Hey, just here, just here. There's one right here, mate. There's heaps of them. Yeah. All right, here we go. It's not the biggest one, guys. I mean, for brim, for brim and stuff, it's okay. So it's 
So this is basically a brim bait, but we're looking for bigger ones. Oh, he's trying to bite me, dude. And it's good to have one of these as well. That's a, another bit of kit bait we forgot bucket, to mention. Yeah. Need a bait bucket. You definitely need a bait bucket off your waist. Let's see if we can get some bigger ones. Let's go for the bigger ones. Jeez, there was a lot coming up here, wasn't there? Yeah, there's a few, yeah. You're there's fine. a few, but it's too hard to work. The problem is the beach is it's more slanted here. You've got to look more for the flat, flat side of the beach. So what we're doing here is we're looking for a bit of flat beach. So that's where the waves are rolling back a lot slower. Keep your torch in one spot for us, see if we can... <laughs> There's one right there. It's not a piggy, but we just tried. No. Missed him? Yeah, missed him. Do you miss a few? You do. It depends on how uh, okay, uh, gotta... the water is. So now you're letting that bite through. I can see that bite. Nah, water. I saw its head. Yeah. It all comes down to the water rushes here. You can use it. Yeah, so we've got to find a bit of flatter beach. Yeah. Nah. And you've got to be careful where you step just in case you step on the worm because the, the worm, it, it's vertical to the beach. So it's horizontal. We've got one right there. Coming up. Coming up. You see, oh, no, I've got a really good footage of that, man. Still there? You can see him lumping up. You can smell the herring. Hopefully, it comes back up. Nah. There's one right here, right here. They get shy, don't they? Yeah. Do you reckon it's because of the light? Could be, yeah. Could be because of the water too. Oh, come on. They're very finicky tonight. I don't know why. They like that sometimes, but they... Sorry? Somehow it didn't give me a chance to, to grab it. Sometimes it's just very hard. Uh, very shy. I'll come up for a smell now. So what Steve's just said, what well, we're letting him concentrate, is try to look for the soft sand where it's not as compact. Just there. Wow, look at that thing. Put it in your hand. Wow. That's incredible. Alright, in he goes. How long is that one? Just stretch him out for us. Uh, oops. A couple, maybe two foot. Two About foot. 60 centimeters. Yeah. So that's pretty much two of them are pretty good for a brim session. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. That's a good that's a good one to put on a 7 or or an 8 circle hook. Yes. I don't want to have to quickly pluck out now before the wave came in, so... He's gone. Go back the other way. Nice hit. Pluck up. There's another righty, 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 righty. That's a good one, that one. Just let those waves come. Looks like a good move over that one. Is he there? Look how thick that mammoth is. Just the girth of it. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> you were digging and digging on that yeah, one. It's snapped. Snapped? Yeah. Still a nice one, so you try to dig it out. Okay, that's not a bad one. 
These are more for the for the whitey, they're more of a red worm. That is a red one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But that's probably only a quarter the size of it. Right before the wave, let us see it. Hold that out, hold that out in front of you. That's a nice one, mate. It's not bad, it's all right. Wow, look at that. They're quite an interesting creature. Yeah. All right. How, let us have a look in your bucket. Here in there. We're getting there. One there. Wow! Here's wow. the we've been closing, you've been waiting for. Watch the wave, look at that. Oh, look, wow. Here's your jewelry bag. Show us how thick that is, look at that. It's thick. Let me just... Wow. And I've got big hands, guys. My size jewelry bag. Put it up on the sand and we'll see how it is, how long it is. Wow. Up here's alright. Just turn off your light because it's, it's... Just turn off, don't snap him, just turn off your light. Just turn off your light for us because... Yeah, it's off. Yeah, it's off. I'll go get the buckets. Now in a nutshell... I'm a 30... This one's about 70 centimetres. What a nice size specimen. sliding down. Just stretch him out, eh? Yeah. Stretch him out. So he's... Have you got him out there? 80... 80... What's that, 85? Yeah, about 85. So 85 centimetres. steve -o, look at the camera. Boys. <laughs> Speak up. You've got a few broken bits and yeah, pieces. Yeah, we've got a couple of broken bits. Best bit with the broken bits is put them in a separate container so it doesn't dirty the water, it doesn't bloody the water, and um, keep the whole ones um, in, the, in a separate bucket. So, what, how many we've got there? Eight or nine, have we? We've probably got about ten. Ten. You got the big, big one. Big Pull big. that big one out again, mate. Wow, that's huge. You look, you look at that compared to your average size one, and the difference is massive. So there, there's a size, there's a size comparison. So put a small, a smaller one in one hand and your big one in the other. See? Just snap. <laughs> Just broke. Oh, he broke. Yeah, he broke. They break. So... That doesn't matter. So that's the fruit of our labour. Wow. It's not bad, about 15, 15 good ones. Some big ones in there, there was an 85 centimeter one as well, mm. but I'm not putting my hand in there. And I can, we can notice that that water's turning red. What's the reason for that? Look, the water's turning red because um, the bigger size one that uh, broke off is um, bleeding slowly, which is making the water go red color. If I can find the red one, which is, not that one. It's a big one too. That's another big one. Yeah, so basically once they break, they, they leak out blood and, and it affects your water quality. So it's probably a good idea to keep your broken ones in a separate this plastic one. bag. Yeah. As it breaks, it um, contaminates the water, it gets a red colour. So the, the ones that break off, you're better off putting them in a separate container and keeping them together. Alright, and you can freeze those ones, eh? 
Or you can freeze them. You can just keep changing the water maybe every maybe six, seven hours. It should be and, all right. Um, they should be all right for 24 to 48 hours. Okay, hang on a sec. Let's go. Let's just rig ourselves up. Okay, <laughs> nice work there, Steve-o. Thanks, mate. So what have we got? Just stretch him out as much as you can without breaking him. Wow. That's a good one. That's one of the good one. That's one of the better ones. Okay, yeah. well, you know what? I'm going to take a couple of these and I'm going to go um, chase some brim tomorrow. Yep. So I'll keep them alive. That's it. Um, and you know what? Uh, so if you want, if you don't want to keep them in a bucket of water, just get some dry sand. Uh, keep them in a cool place, even in the fridge too. You can keep them for about 24 to 30 hours in the fridge. Right. Steve, -O, thank you very much. So um, tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we get for a jury session. All right. We, you got to tell us where you're going. Uh, no. <laughs> nah, not really. Not really, okay. Secret. Well, look, we've got the bait. Um, basically, they're, they're all there. And we're going to try catching mulloway on beach worms. And um, That's correct. Let's go, let's go to bed, have a sleep. Have a sleep. Go to work tomorrow. Bait's and then... ready for tomorrow for some jewies, and hopefully we can uh, crack a good-sized jewy. Hopefully. What do you reckon? We can get a metre plus, at least. Oh, with the worms we got, should be, should be able to, yeah. yeah All right, no worries. So let's just cut back to the technique with these. I noticed when you were squeezing that little that little sock, yep. you kind of had your little your middle finger. You're sort of sticking it into the sand, and you're actually trying to to break to break. Loop the, it. Yeah. You're basically trying to get stick that finger up underneath. So that was your second hand. You, you've grabbed it with a with a stocking and your right finger, and then you've gotten it under there and you've cut it away, That's and correct. that kind of that kind of ruins their momentum it, of going it, down. It, it, it sort of pins them between, you know, you know, I squeeze the sand and then I've got the finger underneath that goes under and it sort of pins them and then you pull them out. So it's you sort of It's a I don't think I don't yeah. think we're, we're, I don't think we can teach this technique. It's No, you got to learn it. <laughs> okay, you got to learn and I think at the end of the day I think it's probably best like us what we did tonight is have a few practice sessions. Don't go bring in your rods and stuff. Focus, have a few Even goes. If it's in the daytime, you know, get 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 used to the surroundings, see how the water is. Um, you'll figure out, you know, with the tide going low, it's probably better. Hour yeah, the, two. The, 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 the two hours before the tide's definitely better because we had the tide rising there. That's correct, which um, made it a bit difficult. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't catch a worm to save my life tonight. So <laughs> um, the tide kept rising. And what you want is you want the sets of waves They're not to be, be too big. Slower. A, a slower. Yeah, yeah, slower yeah, so and not as big. Yeah. Smaller tide, like a 0.3 or a 0.4 is better i think tonight it was 0 0.8 0 0.9 which is you know it's a bit high you know even with the tide coming up it'd probably even be higher so. okay so you want an extremely low tide and you want a small swell and you want those waves to be yes. further apart from and each the other if they're close to be more flatter it can't be um it can't be um, you don't want a steep you don't want a steep slope you want a, a, a slow yeah. sloping and try looking for the softer patches just of to, sand. just to get used to getting the worms and then obviously after you learn to get the worms in the softer sand, you try in the harder sand. Okay, so, yeah. no worries. All right, mate, it's time for bed. Time for bed. Let's, uh, we'll see everyone on the other side of this when we've got no these worries. these baits out in the water on our um, on our NS Black Hole beach rods. That's correct. All right, I can't wait to use mine. Let's go. Let's go.